I feel like if any other family channel went about their videos the same way the LeBrant family does, they would get a whole bunch of flack. I want these family channels to start following some new guidelines. Because you know, all vlog families are the perfect family and they're all couple goals. The LeBrant Fam is an extremely popular family vlogging YouTube channel with almost 13 million subscribers and millions of followers across their social media pages. Many fans see their content as wholesome and adorable, but there are a lot of controversies and secrets hiding beneath the surface. What happens behind the scenes, and how does it impact their family and content? Before I get into the tea, I just want to put out a disclaimer. Please do not send any hate to Cole LeBrant, Savannah LeBrant, their children, Tommy Smith, or anyone else mentioned in this story. This video is simply meant to report on the news and give some insight on the situation. Also, this is the first part of a series on the situation. Please wait until the end of the series before forming your opinion on what happened. In order to understand the confusion and controversy surrounding this family, I need to give you a brief overview of their backgrounds and their online life. Savannah Sudis gained online fame through an Instagram account with her mother Deborah, known as Gigi, and a friend Michelle Foley. The account, called Forever and For Ava, showed the friendship between Savannah's daughter Everly and Michelle's daughter Ava. The account and the girls were extremely popular, being covered in several magazines and websites, including BuzzFeed, InStyle, Us Weekly, Huffington Post and Glamour. Everly and Ava were also featured on a toddlerography segment on The Late Late Show with James Corden with Jenna Dewan. As well, Savannah and Everly had a popular Musical.ly account with around 4 million followers. Holabrand gained fame on Vine as one-third of the comedy group Dem White Boys, where they had around 4 million followers. He also went viral for asking Selena Gomez to go to prom with him through a YouTube video. According to their How We Met video, Cole and Savannah met at the Grove, an outdoor mall in Los Angeles, in the summer of 2016 when Cole was visiting California with his best friend and his brother for a month. When they met, Savannah was a 23-year-old single mom and Cole was 19 years old. In January 2017, Cole and Savannah got engaged and in July 2017, they got married. The wedding video went viral, receiving over 44 million views. In addition to Everly, who is Savannah's daughter from a previous relationship, the couple have a daughter, Posey, and a son, Zealand. With all of the background information explained, let's talk about two of the biggest inconsistencies in their story, Savannah's past and her and Everly's relationship with Everly's father, Tommy Smith. Savannah has spoken about her past in several videos, most notably in the LeBrant fan video, My 19 and Pregnant Story, and in Cole and Savannah's book, Cole and Sav, Our Surprising Love Story. Some fans have speculated that Savannah and her sister were forced into modeling as children by Gigi, and that Gigi was also allegedly the driving force behind the Forever and For Ava Instagram account. However, most people have believed Savannah is not telling the whole truth about how her daughter was conceived and her past and current relationship with Tommy. In the book, Savannah described her parents' divorce due to her father cheating on her mother and how it had an impact on her own relationships. As I wrote before, having him cheat on me made me see my parents' divorce in a whole new light. I better understood how hurt my mom was, and I could not understand how my dad could do that to her. After breaking up with her Christian boyfriend, Savannah said she started dating Tommy as a rebound. A few months after Savannah and Tommy began dating, Savannah became pregnant. In both her book and her video, she refers to the pregnancy as being unplanned. In the book, this is how Savannah described the circumstances she was in when she found out she was pregnant. We had just broken up when I realized I was late, so I bought a pregnancy test. Tommy came over and we saw the results together. I was pregnant. And in her video, this was how she described telling her mother she was pregnant. A couple weeks had passed and I still hadn't told my parents. Um but I was starting to gain a little bit of weight and eat a lot of food and I think I was like two months, maybe three months pregnant. We were in the kitchen, I was baking some cookies and my mom just kind of went, I don't know if you should be eating those cookies, Savannah. And I just like broke down because I had all those crazy pregnant hormones and my mom was basically telling me that I had gained a little bit of weight and I just kind of screamed at the top of my lungs, you know why? I've gained a few pounds, well, I'm pregnant. 
At the time, I was with Everly's dad, and he was there too, and my mom just starts yelling at him, my brother starts yelling at him, basically the whole family was home. Finally, when I came back in the house and got myself together, my mom just started crying, and she goes, well, we're gonna love this little baby, like, I don't, basically I thought she was gonna kill me for being pregnant at 19, but she totally was opposite and was so supportive, and even though she told me I was dumb for getting pregnant at so young, which, of course I was, wasn't being too smart, but I got the best little miracle baby ever out of it, and I wouldn't change it for a thing. Based on her own telling of the story, the pregnancy appeared to be unintentional. However, some fans speculated the pregnancy was planned. In an AMA with a source close to the LeBrand family in a LeBrand fam snark forum, the source claimed Everly was planned. The source also claimed Savannah cheated on Tommy, which doesn't line up with what she wrote in the book about her feelings on cheating. While it's impossible to independently confirm the source's allegations, the forum has a history of knowing things about the LeBrand family before they became public knowledge, like Zeeland's name. The other major point of confusion with the LeBrand family is Everly's father, Tommy Smith. In their YouTube content and book, Cole and Savannah seem to mostly speak about Tommy in a negative light and appear to minimize his role in Everly's life. In their book, which came out in 2018, Savannah described her volatile relationship with Tommy. In the beginning, Tommy seemed like the sweetest guy ever. He made me feel so special. Two months after we started dating, we slept together for the first time. I was 19. To be honest, the decision to have with him wasn't a big deal since I'd already lost my virginity to my high school boyfriend. Pretty much the next day, my super sweet boyfriend changed completely. It was like he got what he wanted, so he stopped trying, except when he wanted more. Savannah said Tommy was excited about her pregnancy, but when she was six months pregnant, she said she found out Tommy was cheating on her. They broke up, but got back together when Everly was born. He promised me he changed, and I let myself believe him because I felt like I had to do everything I could to try to make a relationship with Tommy work for our daughter's sake. He hadn't changed. Savannah said the relationship got worse once Everly arrived, and Tommy left her weeks after the birth. Tommy came back around whenever something big with Everly happened, like Christmas or a birthday. A lot of times, I asked him to come back because I felt like our daughter needed her dad to be there. He came, and both of us were so focused on Everly that we didn't argue, and we had what felt like happy family times. Happy family days triggered the two of us talking about getting back together. He'd swear everything was going to be different this time. Just give me another chance, he'd say, and I always caved. We always got along great as long as Everly was with us. However, whenever she was with my mom or a sleep, the arguments started. The same old arguments we always had. Words flew. I was left feeling ugly and worse than worthless. Like no one would ever want to be with me because I had a kid. I could not live with that, so Tommy and I would split up again. After every breakup, when Ev was asleep, I'd break down in tears before God, begging him to bring me a guy who would love and respect me and love Everly like his own. Savannah also said Tommy drank a lot in addition to cheating on her and not being present for Everly. When Savannah met Cole, she was technically still dating Tommy, but she had intended to end things with him. After Savannah and Tommy broke up, Cole described how Tommy reacted to finding out Cole and Savannah were dating. Right after I got home, Savannah texted me pictures of her car. Someone, probably her ex, had written across the windshield and on the windows, I am so sorry, I want to get back together. She also texted pictures of a bunch of flowers on her front porch and boxed of candy. Then she called me and told me that yes, Tommy had done all of this. She laughed it off and told me she'd washed the writing off her car, thrown the flowers in the trash, and didn't even text him back. Cole also described his first meeting with Tommy. Cole said he was friendly to Tommy, but Tommy was not friendly to him. In that first meeting, I walked over to Tommy and put my hand out to introduce myself. He just slapped my hand away and kept walking over towards Sav and Ev. He didn't say a word, but I got the message. He wanted nothing to do with me. But that wasn't really going to be an option if I kept dating Savannah. Cole and Savannah do say positive things about Tommy, but they appear to send mixed messages about their relationship with him. Cole shared their outlook on Everly having two father figures in their book. I feel so extremely blessed for the relationship I have with Everly and that she calls me daddy. She calls Tommy dad as well. We told her the truth. Yes, technically I am her stepdad, but I would never tell her that she couldn't call me dad if that's what she wanted to call me, and there's nothing wrong with having two dads. In the video, Everly auditions for her first official TV show, Surprise, Cole and Savannah coach Everly on what to say during the interview portion of an audition for a TV show. When Savannah asked Everly to share something interesting about herself, Everly said, I have two dads. One made me and one raised me. 
The Vanna has also referred to Cole as raising another man's kid, which seems to imply Tommy is not really in the picture with Everly. In the video, The Truth About Savannah's Past, Cole and Savannah spoke in a more nuanced way about their relationship with Tommy. Savannah said while she had a toxic relationship with Tommy in the past, they have a good relationship as friends now. He's, he's still a good guy and I don't want to bash him. We used to let him see Everly. Um, we all we, we always want yeah, him in our life, we want her. and he, he he loves her to death. Yeah. He, he's you know a great great dad to her. He, yeah. he, he loves her, um, and and we do our best to. And, and, he, and he's doing a great job just maintaining that friendship. In addition to their descriptions of Tommy, Savannah's past, and their current relationship with Tommy, some fans have noticed some interesting things from social media posts. Cole often shares close and loving images and videos with Everly. He and Savannah often refer to Cole as being Everly's daddy, which can lead to some younger fans to assume Cole is Everly's biological father. In fact, some Cole and Savannah fans have left negative comments about Tommy on his social media accounts. And when one fan said Everly might resent Cole for not adopting her, Cole replied, I would if I could. However, fans have also noticed interesting things on social media about Tommy. Some fans found old social media posts that appeared to show Tommy happy and present in Everly's life. As well, Tommy's Instagram account is full of photos of him with Everly. He's also shared positive things about Cole and Savannah, like this Instagram story share of one of Savannah's posts calling her the best mom in the world. Despite the image the LeBrants try to present at times of them and Tommy happily co-parenting and maintaining a friendship, there have been some cracks in their image. One of Tommy's posts showed a photo of child-sized pink Converse shoes with the message, Daddy loves you to the moon. In the caption, Tommy wrote, Bought my girl some new Chuck Taylors, just like her pops, and his pops before him, and his pops before him, and so on and so forth. I love you to the moon and back. Thought I'd let you know it. However, some fans noticed Savannah had listed a pair of pink Converse shoes on her Depop account that looked like the same shoes Tommy gave Everly. Cole and Savannah have also allegedly blocked Tommy from viewing the social media accounts they've set up for Everly. When someone addressed Tommy being blocked from viewing Everly's accounts in the comments of one of Tommy's Instagram posts, Tommy replied, I just think the relationship with my daughter is different between the relationship with the mother of my child, so that's why I keep poking at it. I really would love to see what's going on in my daughter's life online. Line. Just want to be a part of it and not be casted away and portrayed right out the gate as some deadbeat. Didn't speak up for myself a while back and regret it. I didn't know the power that people with followers, fame, and fortune have. And there appear to be some complicated feelings around their custody arrangement. Social media comments from Tommy and Gigi have indicated that some supervised visits with Everly are held at Gigi's house. In October 2019, Tommy posted a screenshot on his Instagram story from a FaceTime call with Cole, showing that Cole wasn't answering his his FaceTime calls. On the image, Tommy wrote, I think it's time to take these people to court. A moderator of a LeBrand family snark forum clarified what happened. We were told by one of our insiders that for a long time, anytime Tommy would call to try and FaceTime or talk with Everly at prearranged times, nobody would ever answer or their phones seemed to be off. He isn't allowed to call Savannah's phone and has to go through Cole's phone to talk to her. At least that is what the arrangement was as recently as a couple of months ago. Yes, I definitely think Cole and Sav have done and said some really really things when it comes to Tommy and Ev, but on the flip side, Tommy definitely isn't angelic with a shining halo either. There have been issues on both sides. Things have come a long way, but there's still a pretty tumultuous history between him and Savannah that really only those close to the situation know about. Everly's not allowed to just contact him whenever she feels like it. Her ability to contact him is more liberal when she's with Gigi if he's not there with her. There are scheduled designated visitation dates, times that he gets to see her. He does try to see her as much as he can in addition to that. Also, Tommy has given Cole a lot of credit for facilitating the calls between him and Ev. In February 2020, when someone asked Tommy why he hasn't fought for more custody of his daughter, he replied, I don't have the money to fight her. She knows it. I know it. I live in an apartment. She lives in a $3.5 million mansion. Seeing my daughter is at the mercy of our co-parenting now. I pray that it will work out. There's no way to get the full story on what happens behind the scenes from YouTube videos and social media posts. But what is available online seems to present contradictory messages about the LeBrant's relationship with Tommy. 
Aside from their alleged family issues, the LeBrand family has faced controversies for their content. I won't go into detail on everything for the sake of time, but I will give an overview on some of their most prominent controversies. The LeBrands have often been criticized for their clickbait thumbnails featuring their children, some of which seem to imply one or more of them are hurt or in danger. They've also been called out for how they use their children in their vlogs, like in this video where Everly is left alone with baby Posey and inadvertently mishandles Posey by not properly supporting her. In August 2018, the LeBrands faced controversy when they appeared to clickbait the California wildfires for one of their vlogs. The original thumbnail was a composite image of the family with a photo of fires in the background, implying the family was in immediate danger. While many people living in Southern California had to evacuate due to the wildfires, the LeBrands did not have to evacuate. According to county fire officials and many of the couple's Ladera Ranch neighbors, their home was never in danger. Emily Bloom, a neighbor, neighbor told LAist she was upset when she saw that video. Since I live in the same neighborhood as them, I was baffled as to what fire they could be referencing. I watched half of the video and was so outraged that they would exploit the holy fire tragedy for their own profit. As well, other neighbors told LAist the LeBrant's video caused drama in a private neighborhood Facebook group for local moms. The LeBrant's later changed the title for the video and removed the thumbnail. When Emily Bloom messaged the LeBrant's on Instagram, asking them to donate the money they made off the video to victims of the fires and first responders, she said the couple blocked her along with other neighbors. In April 2019, the LeBrands faced more backlash for an April Fool's prank that many fans believed was too extreme. On April Fool's Day, the LeBrands posted a video titled, We Have to Give Our Puppy Away, saying goodbye forever. The video begins normally until roughly seven minutes in, when Cole filmed Everly lying face down on the couch. Savannah told the camera they decided to give their dog, Carl, away because they were too busy to take care of him. Him. She said Carl defecated and relieved himself all over their home and said he needed to be taken out more often. Cole said they knew Everly was sad but would let her give him away to whoever she wanted. Throughout the video, Everly seems upset with this news and doesn't really respond when Cole or Savannah ask her questions or speak to her. After asking Everly if she'll miss Carl, Cole and Savannah reveal the conversation was a prank. Everly began to cry and Cole asked if the prank went too far. Many people were upset with the LeBrants and accused them of profiting off Everly's pain. In response to the backlash, the LeBrants posted a response video titled, Addressing All the Hate We've Received. In the video, they defended the prank but apologized for the video. Cole said the family had been pranking each other all day and he recorded Everly crying because he wasn't sure if her tears were real. Cole and Savannah said they loved their children and defended themselves against people who believed they were bad parents. Savannah also said they were considering deleting the prank video. The LeBrants eventually deleted both the original prank video and the response. But these aren't the only scandals this family has faced. This is the end of part one. Again, please wait until the end of the series before forming our opinion on what happened. In the next part, we'll discuss some of the LeBrand's controversial scandals, the extreme backlash, and how their content could be harming their children and fans. All that and more coming up in part two. If you like this video, hit the like button. To keep up on all the tea, consider subscribing to the channel.